In this video, I'm going to show you how I created this visual. It's gonna be like a breakdown for me commenting on the process itself, the decision making. So it's sort of a combination between an inspirational and educational video. So without any further ado, let's dig into business. All right, here we go. I started with this dramatic blue cyanish sky that gives me the main lightness that I want into my visual. Then I started to correct its color and basically I wanted the visual to go to the cyanish bluish colors, but at the same time, not a monotone color. You know, I wanted a shift between blue, cyan and a bright aqua. And here I'm trying to distort the sky to give it depth. You know, the next element is these skyscrapers. I wanted to put them to give it a sense of sizes because I want this Death Reaper to look like he's a gigantic one. So I wanted to give a reference in scale. That's why I put these skyscrapers and, th and then the Death Reaper will be much more larger than these buildings. And as you are noticing now, every time I am correcting colors, I'm shifting them using color balance and the lightness, I am controlling it with the uh, curves. That curves gives me more control, playing around the mid tones uh, precisely. Uh, it's better uh, than the levels in this area, you know? Here I'm putting a glow effect into the center of the sky that will uh, separate the three bird from the background and it will be the main source of light you know whenever i'm selecting objects now the ai is really good in selection so i'm using it uh, mainly because it gave me really good results and the death reaper i combined these two images but the background was not contrasty with the image itself that's why i selected it using pen tool and here i'm trying to match the the two images together to look seamless and to look cohesive like one image and the hardest thing was to tweak colors and lightness to be like the same so of course if i found one image uh, that has the, the mode and the reaction in the face uh, this this would be better, but I didn't find found it. So I used these combined these two images to give me the mood that I want. Here I'm using curves and color balance to match the color. And I I decided to just paint this part because it's gonna be like foggy, hazy part, and it will not be have so much detail. Uh, that's why I started to paint it manually using a textured uh, brush and picking the color from the source image itself started to blend it uh, like this. That's easy. The, the other side, I've done the same things, uh, trying to analyze the texture of the clothes and then try to just seamlessly draw it uh, making sure that it, it doesn't bother your eye, okay? That's very nice. I'm always saying that something good to have some digital painting uh, skills if you are into photo manipulation. And believe me, guys, this will put you in a whole nother level. All right, the next step is correcting the lightness. I'm always correcting the lightness, then correcting the color and adjusting the saturation if needed. So here I'm adding some cyans in the mid-tones, some greens also, and some blues. And uh, I'm trying to make the shadows bright, not so dark because it will be affected with the atmosphere uh, effect or atmospheric perspective. I have a full video explaining this. You'll find it in the link in the description. That's very nice. Next, I, I wanted to make like a bright spot behind the Death Reaper just to separate him from the background to make contrast between him and the background. This will make him pop more. 
okay very nice making sure to blend it seamlessly and here i'm adding this foggy um, overlay you'll find all the images that i'm going to use in the link in the description so that you can follow along with me and change its color to give it this cyanish uh, color i'm trying to give the absolute shadows some tint of blue a touch of blue but the mid-tones uh, more cyanish and here i used solid color adjustment layer with blend f i'm just removing the color from the shadows to paint these highlights i'm i'm painting it firstly with a soft layer like this and then duplicating the layer and start to precisely draw the light in specific areas with uh, some maybe textured brush or something. So I'm painting the light in stages. The first soft uh, lights and then the uh, absolute highlights. And if you don't know how to paint light and shadow precisely, I have a full video explaining this in the link in the description. That's very nice. I noticed that the image looks like mono tone or it has only one color which is bluish cyanish color so i decided to give it more suspense uh, adding another color complementary color which is this orange and be careful to use the colors with similar saturations so i i wanted to avoid using a very saturated orange here because this will look odd it will not look seamless in the whole visual, okay? Here I selected this bridge using the pen tool, uh, of course, and then started to tweak its shape to get the best results. Trying to match the perspective, the horizon line, and then I started to centralize everything to make like a, a symmetrical looking visual. This is one of a very good rule of composition. If you want to create a visual that emphasize one thing, one focal point like this. So everything is pointing toward the main point, the main vanishing point. Here I'm correcting the colors using also color balance. And next I started to paint some foggy uh, atmosphere effects using a solid color and you know the golden rule i'm saying uh, every time uh, the further you go in distance the less contrasty the elements should because it will have more atmospheric effect before we go to the next point let's hear a quick message from today's sponsor pexlar.com pexlar is a free online photo editor that is something like photoshop but it's online you can edit anything right from the browser so let's open the pixlar editor this is the advanced one and you can just create a new image and choose from the all sizes that you want so let's go to social and youtube thumbnail so you can do whatever you want use gradient tools selection tools layers any adjustments all the adjustments are here curves levels vibrance and there's a lot of filters as well detail sharpening blur it's just basically a Photoshop but online you can access anywhere the next part is Pexlar Express as you can see Pexlar Express is a lighter version with an easier interface there are a lot of AI tools here like the generative fill, generative expand face swap a lot of uh, AI powered tools in Pexlar Express you will find also an AI image generator so let's give it a shot so let's type something like an old man in the desert all right that is so nice let's try to edit this image let's press into edit image and let's go to the AI tool so maybe let's choose this remove object tool and let's draw selection around this bushes and done they are vanishing another option here is the generative fill so let's press it and let's try to make a selection and let's type something like golden key and press generate and that is not bad here is the golden key 
And one of the best things I like is this text generator. There are a lot of text that already has a style. So for example, if I like this one, I will just click into it and we'll put it right here, for example, and then I can edit the text. So let's just press into the text layer from here and just change the font. You can also change the text. So there are also a lot of cool elements right here. Just press into, for example, these overlays and choose from a lot of ready to use overlays. For example, let's just bring this one and put it anywhere as you want. Check pexlar.com in the link in the description and let's get back to the video. Started to get this image and you know that it's the same process again, correcting the colors, correcting the lightness and now I'm painting some soft shadows because uh, there's no direct light here. We have an ambient light coming from the sky. So I'm just painting some very soft shadows, making the opacity lower and there you go making sure that the perspective is right so i wanted to tweak this a little bit this needs some eyeballing actually you need to have a good eye and this comes with practice always go to pinterest behance to watch uh, the um, artists work this gives you more visual library in your mind and that makes you uh, feel or gives you the ability to judge the good or bad compositions, the good or bad perspective and so on. So I'm here putting this moon to the left just to break this symmetry because it looks like completely identical so I wanted something to break it um, into maybe the left or something. And here I started to paint some highlights coming from the sky because his jacket looks like kind of flat. So I wanted to give it more like texture or something using as the same solid color actually and screen blending mode. That's it. And uh, here I'm using like something between one to 10% flow and uh, toggling between the black and white uh, to paint into the mask itself. Um, I'm making sure to blend the color uh, like, like as you are seeing right now. I started to put some bulbs but I, don't li I didn't like it so I started to bring this fire overlays. I wanted to give it another color because you know it looks like very dull, very monotone so I wanted to bring this fire overlay. That's why I decided to gi give it more orange color com coming from the bottom. Here I used this beam brush. You find all these brushes maybe on the internet or something. And then I used the same overlay. And now I'm painting some ambient light into the bridge itself with the sky color trying to analyze the direction of the light, the form of the objects. Here I used also Blend F to give the lightness some depth. We are in the final stages. I don't know why every time I paint these orangey lights coming from the bottom, not, not the top, coming from the bottom to any object, it looks nice every time i paint orange color maybe fire or anything and the direction is coming from the bottom it looks really nice <laughs> try it yourself every time uh, it looks good actually so i'm here trying uh, using the main solid color brush with a very low flow then trying to paint in some areas and then trying to fade the edges with the same brush as well. Sometimes I'm using the soft rounded brush, sometimes I'm using the same solid color uh, brush. That's very nice. It's actually, this is not the first result. It took me a lot of um, tweaking. This is um, a lot of more than one draft to get to this result. So feel free to make mistakes to finally get the best results. And here I'm using the camera raw filter 
starting to tweak the design, give it the mode, the colors that I want. And this takes forever, guys, because you have kind of unlimited possibilities to get uh, when trying to shift the colors. So here is the final result after some tweaks. Here is before and here is after. All right, guys, I hope you liked the video. If you want to know how to create amazing visuals like these step by step, you will find it in my course, The Ultimate Guide to Photo Manipulation in the link in the description. In this course, we have explained every step I took to create these visuals, and you will find also all the stock images used, the PSD files, and all the brushes that I am using. So don't miss it. And if you want to know how to paint light and shadow precisely, you'll find it in this video. If you want to know how to make atmospheric perspective, you'll find it in this video. Peace.